Hey, what's going on guys? It's Mark back in the workshop on Mark's Aquatics. On this quite short episode, I must admit, we're going to be talking about the native sea aquarium and what I plan doing with it, what I've put onto it and what I've built on top of it. So, without further ado, I'll spin the camera around and I'll show you what I've been up to, okay? Right guys, there's the tank, looking a lot clearer than when you saw it last time. Now what I've built, if you can look up there now, you can see I've put a nice Perspex or acrylic lid on the top and I've put some nice little blocks of acrylic which I've cut here to just suspend it off to let a bit of a gold gas exchange get through there, a little bit of airflow around this side. I've got some relief holes around here so we can fit all these pipes in. I'll just go through what they all do in a moment. We've got the two light bars on the top and we got the max spec jump light up the top there but like I said it's cleared up lovely now we've got all the ammonia the nitrite is all gone we're on nitrate now not too much to go now got that bit of prawn in there just spinning around just releasing the ammonia and different things is going to be attacking that keeping that cycle going and I'm really excited to get down the beach the weekend because the restrictions have lifted and we can go mucking about again so really happy to be going out it's been driving me absolutely bananas in this shed i've got cabin fever starting to twitch in one eye and all that going on not very good at all but what we're going to do is we're going to go downstairs now into the engine room and i'll show you what i've been doing down here there's all kinds going on down here right we have a chiller which i've had for quite a few months lando very kindly sent me this all the way from china works brilliant and I've it's the first time that I've actually used it and it's perfect for this little job that we've got going on at the moment now we've got an upside upside down salt bucket there as a little pedestal for a moment because it's got my 207 on it which is adding some extra filtration in there now I filled the baskets up inside with some bio home which I had in my other filter in my marine tank in the coral room and the big ORC which is full of biohome as well and other medias which I've got in there some pumice different things we've got the four stage RO unit and I've got my other RO unit there which is a three stage one which is just a water for purification just takes all the chloramines chlorines out and stuff like that coppers um, for the pond so I keep them all under here it does need a good tidy up but I just thought I'd put it all together now we've got the one drain here which goes out through the top comes down the back there it's this black pipe which goes into the inlet there on the 207 it comes back out that 207 then goes around there into the chiller goes through all that mechanical matrix inside here where it chills that water down and then it's pumped into a big loop there back up through the steriliser which I can either have on or off on the switch it's just in case we get any outbreaks or anything like that I've got it to hand to sterilize the water and keep everything nice and then it goes back up again and comes out of that one there that's the ORZ return that's the inlet and the ORZ inlet is over there as well in the back so we've got all this going on which is absolutely fantastic now like I said it's a bit messy at the moment but I'm just working it all out. Now this is an experimental tank, so I'm not gonna make it everything pristine straight away, because I'm not sure. I've kept these tanks before in the past, but not to the extent that I wanna keep them with this. I'll just turn off this main light a minute. There you go. Um, yeah, it's just an experimental tank, this one, so you can have a go at it as well, and you can follow along, and I can do my best to help you guys um, with the knowledge that I've gained over the years now with seaweeds they're obviously they're annual and they take you know it's like they're just like plants in your garden you know that the seeds in the water they're everywhere in, in the plankton and everything flowing around and it will just settle on the rocks and the weeds will start growing or there'll be little bits of rock weed left on the rocks and as we get more like daylight hours and those days extend and the water warms up those weeds are going to start growing now 
summertime's the best time to get the weed. I want to get some rainbow rack in here if I can. I've got such good lighting in here now that hopefully that's going to stabilise that. Weed lights nitrite, nitrate, sorry, as well. So we're going to put a lot, it's going to be quite a heavily fed tank and just to get some nitrate in the water. Otherwise the weeds aren't going to grow, I've found. So you need nitrate for it to grow. As if you know when you have got a reef aquarium and you guess what grows the best? You got it, weed. And it grows everywhere. It'll grow all over the place. Different types of calerpas, they grow mad. That's why you put Cheeto in your sumps and different types of calerpa in your sumps because it feeds off the nitrate and the phosphates in the water that your fish are producing and the waste and everything else and that grows. So we're going to need a little bit more in here for these weeds to grow successfully. Now keeping seaweed is extremely difficult in, its, uh, in itself so um, it can just you lose it so quickly um, but the chill is going to be pretty good for this and it's going to keep that water spot on on the temperature that I want to keep it at. Um, so hopefully we can get some beautiful weed growing, seaweed that is, and, um, and we can have it all looking absolutely beautiful. Now I'm really excited, there's so many things on the beach that I can bring home, but obviously we can't do it all in one hit. Now plants and weeds and stones and things, you can put as much of that in as you want straight away, because that's going to be beneficial, because there's going to be bacteria on the rocks, on the weed and everything else, and there's nothing going to be producing much waste in there for it to uh, to go crazy so we can put a couple of little blennies in there if we if we like I'm gonna put some shrimp in there if I can catch some of those little guys I'm sure I can I'm pretty good at catching stuff and um, I've just got a new net which is up here with a four meter long pole so I can go reaching right down into big deep rock pools and things I've got some waders I've got all the kit so we can get out there the weekend and I'm um, really enjoying it. The wife's coming down as well, so she's going to be diving around in, in pools, trying to find things that we can bring back. And I'm really looking forward to it. Yes, all looking good. Right, guys, I think I'm going to leave it there. It's only a very, very short one, just to show you before we go to the beach what it looked like before, like I said, down here, what I've been up to down there. It's running great, very stable now, running at around 12 point, what are we now, 12.9. In fact, as soon as it gets to 13, that chiller will come on and it'll chill it back down again. But there you go, that's what it's all about so far. So I'll see you, well the next time I see you, we'll be down on the beach looking for creatures and critters and all things in my favourite place in the world on the beach rock pooling. Anyway guys, you're all stars, love you loads, take care. And I'll see you on the next episode of Mark's Aquatics. And if you're not subscribed to the channel, guys, and you're new and you want to follow this project, hit that subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up if you'd like, because that does help the channel. And, um, and hit that icon bell and just click on all notifications. And that way, every time I put a new video up on this little tank, you'll be notified, okay? Anyway, guys, love you loads, take care, and I'll see you on the next edition of Mark's Aquatics. Bye for now.